Hello and welcome to this product review of the Apex Predator of the faction The Droon Conquest, the last argument of Kings by Parabellum Wargames. This is the most fearsome, the most lovely and the best sculpted T-Rex or dinosaur miniature in my opinion right now at the market and it is a gorgeous beast. Keep in mind throughout this video that this is the version where I added the Apex Queen on top of the model, not the Apex Predator that's included in the base, cause I already got one of those models with an Apex Predator. You will see all the small steps like assembly, gluing, the base and stuff like this in this video and we start with the lovely box with an awesome, furious looking T-Rex. On this artwork with the small advice it includes the apex predator head and in predator rider this is a small box that you can purchase separately the apex queen a resin miniature that's added on top you've seen it just on before on the turntable on the flip side there is the predator in both configurations, both heads are seen here. Those head with the leather straps and the opened mouth and the Predator Rider. This one is a high quality box that has to be assembled off cam cause it fits very tight. A uh, glossy box inside this package and inside there is the magic of the miniature. The sprues, the instruction manual, the base and the playing cards for using this model in Conquest. There are two cards, one for, for the Predator and one for the Apex Predator. I had not played this model and I can just suggest that this miniature got two activations for the rider and the beast itself or you can play it without a rider then it's the epic predator and if you play it with the rider you play the predator card write it in the comments down below if you know it already i will add this one in battle reports later there are five sprues in this box and there are packed full with pieces on the right hand side you got the sprue with the tail and parts of the head, the neck pieces, a tongue and uh, one side of a mouth. Then you got the sprue with uh, parts of the torso, leg, arms and parts of the saddle, the decorative parts on the T-Rex's hip and some more stuff from the feet and arm. Here is the other side of the torso, the remaining part of the legs and in this left hand sprue there is the rest of the two head options with uh, both neck pieces. On the instruction manual on the front page you got the two variation for the head and the rest of the instruction manual is the same for quote unquote both variants course you cannot change out any parts it would be nice if the tail could be flipped around or something like this but it's okay I guess cause you get one maybe two of these models in an army and including a different color scheme you can give it enough variation that it doesn't stick like a thor like a thorn onto the eye for assembly we need clippers, a hobby knife, we need glue, super glue and plastic glue and I remove the parts from the sprue by clipping it the nearest to the part and removing the plastic left over with a sharp knife. Small advice, don't cut yourself, I am not responsible for this wounds that you inflict on yourself. And after you remove the rough pieces of plastic, you can remove the mold lines like you've seen in my other videos before. Now to the assembly. I guide you through the whole part. Just look what I've do done here and you can repeat the parts or the pieces at home. 
I start with the head, the two jaw bones, the middle piece underneath the neck or the head, and the tongue, the upper jaw, and uh, always dry fit the pieces if they fit correctly or if there is some plastic left over that you forgot to remove so that there is not even a mess with uh, wet plastic glue and trying to remove mold lines on the pl wet plastic glue. So just dry fit it and if it works, glue it together. Leave the plastic glue enough time to dry on the several pieces. So put away the head and start with the torso. This is the most trickiest part of the model, I think, cause you got two of these torso halves and the upper part, the um, back side in this regard of the torso, that's just put slightly above. And if you apply too much pressure, you just push the upper part into the torso like you see in here. So keep that in mind while assembling. The leather straps are assembled later in my process and I go on to the legs. Just dry fit, apply glue, leave this part to dry, assemble the feet and put those together. Step by step like it's suggested in the manual. I leave the rock underneath the right foot separate for this time cause on this part or stage of the assembly I've thought to leave the rock off this model to give it more variation in regards to the other one, but uh, at the end I assembled the rock too, so you can assemble the piece of the rock. I guess it's number 39 just right now if you want to. Put the legs to the torso piece and assemble all the other parts. The tail needs to be glued together. And give it a slight pressure cause the back part of the tail will uh, spread a bit open. So I've took my time, hold it together till it dried and right now we can assemble the T-Rex. Dry fitting as always and I've started with the arms cause I can uh, give some pressure from inside the torso onto the arm so that the contact point will work better. Then it's time to add the tail of course I can use the flat neck to give some pressure like this and then there is time for the head, apply it hold it in place and give it some time to dry. After everything is dried, I apply the decorative parts here. I started on a, the high note that I could leave those separate while I paint, but it wouldn't fit tightly. So I decided to put those, um, those cloth fur and decorative metal pieces on the T-Rex and leave the saddle with the rider off so that I can paint it better. After this piece has dried, some dry fitting with the saddle and I use super glue to fix the two halves of the saddle together so that I can remove it later and fix it even more with plastic glue. And while the super glue dries, I put on those leather straps that connect the saddle to the rest of the leather strap connection pieces. And this is the most fiddly part for me cause I need to get the angle correct. After the saddle has dried, I apply those two bone pieces. I will ap apply the Apex Queen later with some uh, drill holes and some pins so that the resin parts would stick better. And uh, now it's time for the base. 
This is a lot of back and forth with those cork floor tiles, cutting away, fiddling the position and uh, fixing issues while um, getting the base design right here on the fly. I got a small piece to get the rock a bit, a bit higher so that there is more of a steep angle in which the T-Rex bends up while roaring so it maybe look more menacing. And the cork floor tile is um, applied to the base with super glue. This cork floor tiles you can purchase in Germany in a hardware store and maybe it's a option where you live too. Just go there, floor tiles for uh, this heat protection or a smoother feeling on the floor <laughs> and um, at those. Those are more, more value for your money than if you go to a um, hobbyist store where you can buy such cork pieces for way much money. Apply the T-Rex to the race with super glue. I will add some plastic glue later to the foot that's connecting right to the base for a better bond. With super glue and cork I'll fix some of these holes, add them up so that there are no large gaps in here. Give a bit smoother transition to the rest of the base. And after this is done I'll add some decorative parts like skulls. Yes, I'm a sucker for this. I love skulls on my base and I guess they will fit most base designs like dry deserts, um, tropical jungles or uh, grasslands. I guess there needs to be some skulls where some dinosaur roam. And this base, I guess, it's a perfect base or um, this Basing technique is a perfect base for most of your um, uh, design purposes. If you want to go a wasteland, just go with a um, sandy color in the back uh, in the end. If you want to go with grassland or jungle, go with brownish colors and add flock. If you want to go full on jungle, just add some dried up. Um, leaves or uh, stuff right, right out of nature that you can um, imitate some logs or trees and paint it accordingly. After I cut away some uh, leftover pieces I took myself some time with white glue, a bit of water, an old brush and my trusty box of sand. This is a fine sand like bird sand or chinchilla sand this is a bit rougher texture with a rougher granite and there is some small grit. I apply the white glue just from my palette on the base, a small spot here in the front and then I put down some of these grit mix where there is the more rough grit and if this is applied I add a small topping of those small sized grid like bird sand to give it a more smooth and natural texture and um, modify some of those transitions to the rock with a wet brush and remove excess grit where there don't need to be some on the skulls. And if you do this for the whole base you are good to go. And uh, I guess this model is so lovely and sweet and I guess I will have so much fun in painting this figure that um, I am thinking about doing a tutorial, a painting guide for you. If you want to see this in the future just leave me a comment down below, visit us on patreon.com slash titanichorn for further content from conquest like bad raps and stuff like this and until we see us then keep on wargaming!